As we approach the island of Patmos, we begin again the very slow, careful move into the very small harbor of the island. It's a very lengthy process and a very dangerous one if not done correctly. There was talk of us having to be tethered towards the island, meaning that we would have to go down into small boats and then be moved to the harbor because the harbor can only take one cruise ship at a time and there was one ship already in the harbor. However, we did have some luck because the ship that was in the harbor was just leaving. So we simply waited for it to get away from the dock and then our ship docked in its place. Already we begin to catch some glimpses of uh, places on the island itself, although at this point being on the ship, we are still not sure of what they are, but these will become clear when we go on the tour. Patmos is the island where St. John the Divine wrote the revelations in the Bible. And that's one of the areas that we will be visiting. We will visit the cave where St. John actually wrote the revelations, or rather dictated them according to the guide, because St. John was too old to write them himself. And also we will visit the monastery uh, which is a very high area and affords a very beautiful view of the harbor. Monastery on top of the hill. This is the Monastery of St. John to the, the Divine.
about the air conditioning? Are they going to get it? It's, I don't know, the air. Oh. The air. There's no air coming out here. Okay. The monastery of St. John the Divine. The one that looks like a fortress over there. That was built in the 11th century. I know, it's quite hard, but fortunately the distance is also very short. As I said, it's only about five minutes by bus. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to give you some general information on the island. Patmos is a very small island. It's only about 35 square kilometers, and the whole population it's about, say, 2,500 people, that's all. So we could talk only about the two most important villages on the island. One is the harbor, Scala, we call this, or they call it because I'm not a native, I'm not from Patmos, and Kora, um, where the monastery of St. John the Divine is. Then the rest the island you see it across us, this is also Patmos, which is not inhabited as you see, and also it doesn't have any tree. I mean the only area area that's kind of green with trees is from the harbor going to Pora, going to the monastery of St. John the Divine. You see it? I mean this is Patmos, all of it. This is because it doesn't rain much. I would say it rains very little and there isn't enough water and also the earth is not fertile at all these are the two problems that um or because of these problems the island was not really inhabited in the roman period and nowadays everything is important everything when i say everything i mean also the drink of the water especially in the high season, in the summertime, where there are quite a few uh, tourists. There's a Greek isle, there's a ship. The first event that made the island very famous was after the year 95. Hey. After St. John the Divine was exiled here because he was uh, preaching Christianity. And according to the tradition, this is the cave, the cave we are going to now. This is the cave. Where he spent almost two years. Because he was exiled here in the year 95. And then in the next year, 96, the Roman emperor, Domitian, who exiled him here, he was assassinated which means St. John the Divine was allowed to go back to Ephesus, where he came from. So that was the first event, and as I said, during that time, at the Roman period, the island was not inhabited because of the water problem or because also of the land. So when he came here, I mean, St. John the Divine, he found only slaves and prisoners. I mean, it was a punishment to be sent uh, to Patmos at that time. The second event that made the island very famous, and I mean, we can say since that time it's really inhabited, was in the 11th century, in the year 1088, when the Byzantine emperor Alexius Komnenos donated the whole island to the monk Christodoulos. That was his name. And he had the monastery built, the, the other one we are going to afterwards. Since that time belongs Patmos, spiritually, 
directly to the patriot heart of Constantinople, up to date. And um, because of this, I would say, it, it was always privileged in a free island. It was never occupied. Administratively, it belongs to Greece since 1943. From 1912 to 1943, all the 12 islands, Dodecanese, were sold to the Italians. So they were under the Italian occupation. But as I said, Patmos stayed always free because for Rome and Constantinople, it was always considered as a holy island because of St. John the Divine. So if we go back, even in the uh, 13th century, during the last crusade, when <coughs> The whole um, empire at that time, the Byzantine Empire, was divided in smaller kingdoms. Patmos stayed free. Or, I mean, later on, up the 15th century, during the Turkish occupation, again, stayed free. And I mean, this, you may notice, um, we are going to walk only for five minutes from the bus station to the monastery of St. John the Divine. If you take a very careful look at the buildings, you will see, and especially if you have visited Rhodes, did you visit it? Yes. Yeah, yeah. yes. Of course. These both uh, islands, they um, they show a mi um, um, how do you say a mixture? You can say of the <coughs> Greek, of the Italian, of the Turkish elements with moshes and everything, right? Especially on Rhodes. But on Patmos, you don't see this. And right away, you think, haha, well, this island has only the Cycladic architecture. Of course, there are some elements like the arcades that you usually see in Italy. Well, this is because, especially in the 17th century, many people, many um, captains from the ships, they could afford it. So either they had an Italian architect or they brought new things, new element but it's different than on the other islands. Now, about the cave. As I said, um, he was actually only sleeping in the cave because in the rest of the day, he was outside. In the very beginning of the Revelation book, Saint John the Divine says, he starts like this, and uh, as you know probably, the uh, Revelation book, together with the other uh, Gospels, it was written they were written in Greek because although Greece at that time was only a Roman province, the official language was the Greek one. So it was written in Greek and St. John the Divine says, I, John, was on the island of Patmos when one day, Sunday, I heard the voice of God telling me to write a book, the Revelation, and send it to the seven cities in Asia Minor, starting with Ephesus, Pergamon, Sardis, Thyatira, Laodicea, all these cities that had suffered a lot from the persecutions. <coughs> now, this part of the Revelation book is very important because the name of the island, Patmos, is mentioned. So there isn't any doubt where he received the Revelation. Now, as I said, if this is the cave, or if there was another one, I mean, we are not going to talk about this. The main thing is that he received the revelation on the island of Patmos. We don't have the original copy, the one that was written, say, in the cave. The oldest copy we have is in London and is from the fourth century. Also, he continues describing God, that he saw God as a human being, as an old man with white hair, white beard, talking to him. Inside the chapel, in, inside the cave, which um, became a chapel since the 11th century from the monk again Christodulos, we are going to see a big icon with the beginning of the Revelation book showing God as a human being talking to St. John the Divine. Um, have you visited other Greek Orthodox uh, churches? Yes, yeah, so you know that um, there isn't any statues, right? There are only icons 
and the iconostasis. I can explain to you now what the icon is and the iconostasis. I'm going to explain this to you inside the cave because you have to see it. it's easier for you. Icon is the painting of a saint. When we use this word, in, or when the word refers to the religion, then we always mean the painting of a saint, usually on a piece of wood. And I say usually on a piece of wood because there are icons, I mean the famous Russian icons, on metal. Or we have in Mistras the marble icons, which are beautiful. One of the best pieces we have in, um, in art, in Greek art. And always these icons, they were worshipped. I mean, there was also this problem in the 8th century, if any of you is familiar, 8th century after Christ, with uh, um, the people who wanted to have the icons inside the church and with the people who didn't. And it still is, by most of the people, it's worshipped an icon. Um, quite often, people use the word image, although image, it's not a synonymous with uh, icon, with the word icon. In English, you say icon too, also. I mean, you use the word image and icon, but as I said, it's not a synonymous, because image could be also of me or of you, whereas an icon, as I said, is only in a sense. Now, we go inside, and I'm going to explain to you what the iconostasis is and also I'm going to point to you a couple spots, a couple places, say, in the uh, cave that again, according to the tradition, are very important. For example, there is a hole on the wall and the one monk, only one monk is living here at the Revelation Monastery around the cave he always explains, and I've seen this also in books, that this hole was formed when St. John the Divine so God. Then he was so scared that he fell down. Nothing happened to him, but to the um, some theologists and some historians believe that um, St. John the Divine is not the same person with the Apostle because of the age. Anyway, officially, by most of the um, theologists, by most of the historians, is accepted that he's one and the same person. So, because either because he was very old or because he was in ecstasy, he didn't write anything himself. A young man who came, who came with him, named Prochoros, he did all the writing. So, inside the cave, again, according to the tradition, I'm going to show to you the place that he used it as a desk. Um, yeah, there are a couple of steps of mm -hmm. Come on. Come on. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the cave up to here, where St. John the Divine lived, as I said, and the um, small chapel that we see in here was founded 
in the 11th century by the monk Christodulus, whereas the, the other one is rather new, I mean, from the 17th century, is rather new in comparison with this one. Also, in the Revelation book, he describes that from the cave, he could see the sea. Now, if you ignore this wall, the new one, or if you take a look from the window, then the only thing you see is the, uh, the sea. The famous icon I told you about, which is um, very important for the art history, because it's one of the few examples we had in the Greek art history where you see God as a human being, is this one, the big one, and you see then Saint John the Divine laying on the ground. Let's see. Now, this is the place that uh, the young man who followed Saint John the Divine, who came with him willingly, wrote to that place to, as I said, to use it as a desk. That are forming, say, a wall, or it's not the best word, but it's more understandable, and separates the altar from the main church. And with this creation, they chose the hill. And here they have another monastery, a
given after the month, the after the uh, emperor Alexius fighting. I'm just explaining that for the history of the monastery, important are these two scenes where you see the emperor Alexius and here the monk Christophilus, the one who received the whole island as a gift and the one who had this monastery here. So that's why the official document signed by Alexius. We are going to see in the small museum half of the original of this document with the signature of Alexius Kominos from the 11th century. And of course, the next to him, you see St. John the Divine, in his honor, the monastery of Israel, and then Jesus Christ and the Virgin Mary. Now, the places that we may visit are the following. The small chapel of the monk Christodulos with these remains. If you would like to take a look there, then you're going to see in a small sarcophagus, <coughs> a silver sarcophagus, his remains, because he didn't die here. He died most likely on the island of Oibia, which is across Athens, across Attica. But I mean, his wish was always to be buried on this island. So they brought his remains, and this monastery is built in his honor. Then we are going to see the main church, the church of the Virgin Mary with beautiful wall paintings from the 12th century. Unfortunately, the, the time is very short, so we cannot discuss it. Then the Bakery and the small museum. Now, the thing we should like to take a look there, in there, please do. without flesh, which means you have to have a very, very sensitive, it's okay, it's, you're lucky I didn't mention it, I'm always waiting till all the people come, so I can, would you please come closer, but I mean, if you have, any, if you have a sensitive, yeah, then we can do it, we don't, so. church, as I said, which was built at the end of the 11th century. It started in the year 1088, and then in the three years that uh, the monk Custodulus was here, the church was built, the refectory, and also a part of the surrounding wall, because uh, the monastery was used also as a fortress. I mean, it looks like one, and it was used also as an acropolis, as a fortress. Now, the type of the church is a cross in square. The cupola is based on four columns. We see only these two, because the two others are behind the iconostasis. Here we have again another iconostasis, which is very big though. This is the development. As I said, in Olympia, you saw one of the earliest, which was also very small. And then we saw in the cave, two of the 16th century, and this one is from the 19th century, from the year 1820. And it's a... Please take a look if you're interested in it, if you would like to see. Now, theology, the oldest layer. 
And that's why, of course, all of them, the two scenes there, are, are clean, um, they are conserved, I mean, they are um, very well done now. Um, as I said, the town is running, and I would like you, I would like that you see also the refectory, and then we go to the small museum. Father, Father. Hello, Mr. Pastor Meridia. Hello, hello, hello. Two of the monks that live here. Yeah. And again, sign asking for people to be properly dressed. So, further down, and the view as we walk down, again, Patmos Harbor, so we continue to walk down.
to get back on board and we are heading back to Athens, to Piraeus. Thank <laughs> you. 